District 2 into the City of Medford delaying this procurement? Um, we, we went out and, just for the record, jointly with Medford Rural Fire District Number 2, which we have a contract with the City to purchase two fire apparatus, identically the same um, through Hughes Equipment, which is a, a Pierce representative. And what that does for us is saves us about $24,000, $25,000 a piece through that group purchasing and doing that together. And if what's before you is to do an, an early work, early prepayment of that, save us. Kind of package that with them as an option to do that together to move forward. Um, I would have to take it back to the Metro Rural Fire Protection District and, and say, what, what's your choice? Would you want to continue with that or opt to wait? Okay. Was this, would you discuss about the budgetary process that we went through to arrive at this point for the purchase of that item? Well, one of the struggles we've had over the years with purchasing uh, fire apparatus, they're a big ticket item. We understand that when uh, the city is fighting for dollars, well, I shouldn't use the word fighting, but struggling to what do we want to put dollars towards. You, know, you come in with a, a $750,000 purchase for an apparatus, and that takes out five or six other items that other departments might want to do. And so a lot of times we had to either not go through with that or put it off. And so working with our finance department, we opted for this budget cycle to enact a fire replacement fund. So it's something that we can work towards putting money away for when we get enough money, we could purchase a fire engine or two or a ladder truck or uh, you know, water tender, some of those things that wouldn't put a big hit on the budget to come in and wipe out everybody's you know, budget issues with the fire department say, hey, we need a, need a fire engine. So that was our goal this time to be able to enact that. And through the budget process, we were to, uh, successful to get that started over the two-year uh, biennium receive $400,000 per year, $800,000 total, which we um, procured 750 for the purchase of this apparatus. And, and what it does is it covers the fire apparatus, this um, $731,000 that's before you, and the equipment. We're taking, right now we're taking one uh, piece of apparatus out of service. It's uh, maintenance concerns. So we've had a lot of issues with that. It's, it's at the end of its life. One of our goals is, through this process, is to be able to take um, and have two apparatus at every fire station. What that would allow us to do is if uh, one needs to go in for service, they don't have to take an engine from across town, pick up reserve, then take it to the fleet maintenance and drop it off, taking about an hour out of you know a crew's precious time to be in their first in district. If we were to have a, a fire engine not start for whatever reason that has happened, for us, we have some broke down. They've got another apparatus right there in the station where they can jump on, just delaying their response slightly rather than having an engine come from a different fire station to cover that call. And so that's our goal. So we're, we're taking one out of service going to be replaced and adding one to our fleet to give us 10 total um, fire apparatus or pumpers. Thank you. For the questions for Chief Fish. Yes, please, Mr. Matthews. Thank you. Uh under the purchasing agreement, under the terms, it mentioned uh, delivery from the factory taking nine to ten and a half months. Um, is that a common practice when ordering an apparatus? One question. Second question. In that, do you guys have input on any of the design or any custom work on it, or does it come fully loaded? Yes and yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's typically they, they start with a, a cab design, and then we've had... We've had apparatus committee been working on that, working with um, Pierce because it's under group purchasing agreement. So we get the discount through that, being able to do it so we can work with the, the vendor in, in design uh, based on our needs for this area, what we have. We don't need a four-wheel drive engine, so we can take that out. Some places do, and that gives an option for that. And so we build compartments based on our tools, um, a pump capacity based on our needs for fire flow hose bed sections and all that kind of stuff that we can we can adjust to fit our needs as an organization. So that kind of happens up front to get to the point where we are now. During the process in this bid allows for uh, two visits back to the factory to take a look at making
making sure that they're following um, what our needs are in, before we, in the acceptance at the end, make sure they did what they said they were going to do. We send people we, we ought to take place in that and send people from our apparatus committee um, there to go over with a fine tooth comb and they're there late into the evening going over line by line by line looking at each compartment and make sure they're following um, what they said they were going to do and meeting our needs. And so that's kind of what takes place in that process, but they don't they don't have one we can go buy off the shelf. You know, that um, in fact when we were trying to get some some information, you know, we called up there, well do you have you know kind of a base model that they do and they kinda of laughed at us because they said everybody starts with a basic design and then they build what they have to meet their needs and that's part of the process. And then we have to once we sign the paper we have to get on their list and then we go into this line and, and then it's build as it goes in and that's part of what it takes the time. Thanks, Chief. Mr. Jackal. Uh, can I ask a couple questions? Uh, well, he, he set the precedent. Okay. Um, I might not be able to remember them. I know, <laughs> I know Dan Marsis is here, but um, how soon could you talk to their board? I mean, do you know when their next meeting is? The fire district? Next meeting is the first Wednesday of, of each month. So it'll be October, whatever that is. Okay. I was wondering if we could check in with them. I mean, what would what would the problem be with us delaying for a time and then being able to check with in with them to find out what their ability to delay? I, I really don't want to. Okay. Well, w one of the issues is the timeline with the bid. Um, this uh, bid that we've got is is good through the end of November. But we've also got a, a 90 day window for receiving all these discounts that I talked about to begin with. My you know, I'm not, don't want to speak for the board, but they waited until our budget committee was done and that piece was approved before they entertained the motion of paying for that. They wanted to make sure that that, that the city was going to come together as a partnership and do that. So you know, I'm not going to speak for them, but my inkling is that they would probably pull that out just to make sure that we're doing that. One of the things that we've had with that relationship over the years is you know, they own quite a bit of our fleet in the contract that says that that's, that's ours for the duration of the contract. So we don't have a fear of them coming and pulling that out of the way, but they're required by contract to have just a minimal amount of apparatus. What they've chosen to do is work with us and build that fleet up. If they purchased one and the city didn't, we'd have nine apparatus. They would own five and we'd own four. So I think that if, you know, if that would probably in their estimation from the meetings I've had be a deterrent for them to continue, but I would certainly approach them. And, and sure. Okay. Thank you. Further questions for the chief? Okay. Thanks very much. Appreciate you. I would look for a motion. Mr. Bundle. Your Honor, I move to approve the ordinance authorizing the purchase of a Pierce fire pumper and fire equipment in the amount of $731,200. Second. Second for Mr. Stein. Okay. Mr. Bundle. Uh, several points, Your Honor, since we've had the afternoon to think about this. Um, this was a big budget priority for us, not just the purchase of the apparatus, but setting up a reserve fund. Uh, one of the great things about equipment, machinery, and your capital assets is that they deteriorate at a pretty predictable rate. It's one of the things we're proud of in public works with our pavement is that we're replacing it in such a way that is responsible and is going to end up costing us the least amount in the long run. It's the same principle here. We know we have to buy fire apparatus. We've scheduled out, our professional staff has scheduled out the best way to do it, the most cost-effective way to do it, uh, the way to do it that's going to protect the population. And the budget committees come together and put the money aside so that we can stick to that schedule. It's always easiest to go raid your capital purchases when, when cash is short. I, I don't want to see that be the path that we start taking because we're short on the, on the real estate projects. We have a lot of good stuff that comes out of our fire department. Um, we, we actually don't have a lot of firefighters. We only put three people uh, on a fire truck. And one of the reasons we're able to do that and keep our labor costs down is we have you know, very professional staff, good career firefighters, but we also have very good equipment. And that's our end of the bargain is that we need to keep good equipment for, for our personnel. And I think this purchase is consistent with that. And, and finally, even though our relationship with District 2 has been turbulent, at times, especially in the past couple of years, 
the fact of the matter is we've had a long and good fruitful relationship with them and this is exactly what government should be doing is working together to keep costs down and serve our common constituents so I think this purchase should go forward I know t today we're looking for extra money to finish up the police and fire departments but I don't think this is the place to look for it okay. thank you Mr. Stein I think Mr. Bunn uh, was reading off my script but uh, uh, yeah, I think I think the budget uh, committee made a commitment for this, and I think we need to uh, proceed. For the, yes, please, Mr. Jack. I, I would have no trouble delaying this if it weren't for the District Two thing, and I think uh, we, you know we are in a partnership with these folks, and they've gone the, down the road relying on some of the things that we've done, and uh, I, I, you know I don't want to harm them in the process because. We delay, and you know, we ultimately are going to have to figure out a way to buy it anyway. But the delay is just going to hurt them, and I, I, I can't vote for that. So, thank you. Further discussion, Mr. Gordon. <clears throat> yeah, I made uh, my comments at noon, and uh, quite honestly, Chief Fish really uh, made an interesting to comment uh, at the study session, which. Um, did impact me, and I, I hear your impact uh, or your statements. Um, I just have the, the issue that the more money we spend now, the less options we leave open to address the four buildings that we're trying to deal with. And um, I know that we're all looking forward to Allison telling us that we have lots of extra property tax money in the second year, but I'm not quite as optimistic as I think most of the council members are that we have are going to have extra money to fund the, the, the unfunded items that the uh, budget committee uh, could not uh, see uh, clear to be able to fund with uh, uh, existing um, um, uh, money uh, or proposed money that we'd have. And I think that's you know, I'm going to go back to the priority for the budget. We funded things because we had a certain set of information from staff. And we based our decisions on that information. The problem is that that information was wrong in the case of these four buildings. Whose fault it is, we'll probably know. But uh, the fact is that it was wrong. So if the, uh, if the budget committee had the new information, would they make different decisions? And that's, that's, that's where I'm coming from. So we don't know the second year of our budget what the revenue is going to be. Um, I still think that it, from a private sector person, um, I would definitely put a hold on, on all capital uh, equipment from, the, in our case, the general fund or any funds uh, where we could divert it to um, other projects. We have a lot of of uh, funds where we can't touch their earmark for that particular fund. We can't touch that. Um, but for capital equipment and for uh, capital construction, say everything over 50000 at least it would come back, you know, come to us for review first. Um, and I think I don't look at it, um, Mr. Bond, that the Budget Committee really established priorities. We just simply funded those things based on the, on the knowledge that we had at that time of the funding. And basically now we're finding that, that there's not adequate funding to cover those budget items. And if nothing else, I'd prefer to go back to the budget committee. And then you would have, um, then I could agree with what you're saying, but I think it has to go back to the uh, budget committee. But again, the, the more decisions we make right now in spending uh, 730000 um, it does re reduce our options, and I don't have a problem in waiting a couple months. I'm sure that this can be rebid by both Fire District 2 and, and Fire District or, and Medford uh, at a, you know, in two months. And uh, if it costs us $10,000 more to, to buy the same piece of apparatus, and so be it. But it does leave options open for us right now to be able to uh, manage a significant problem that we have. And again, I will say that, that I'm not picking on this piece of apparatus. I'm, I'm speaking, basically, we need to um, kind of stop funding uh, or uh, buying everything 
and building everything that's in the that's being funded by the general fund and uh, until such time as we work through this this problem I don't remember exactly what the dollars were for the general fund for capital equipment and for um, uh, for uh, capital construction but it's probably significant and um, we need to keep our options open. Mr. Butt. Uh, to your first point, uh, I'm not counting on any additional property tax either. I think we, uh, putting it at 6%, I, I wouldn't, I'm not thinking any more is coming in. But to your point. Maybe less. Potentially. Uh, we are scheduled to reconvene the budget committee. I do think in one way or another the question about the uh, public safety facilities is going to get to them. Um, you're right, they didn't have all the information, and it is appropriate to go back to them. But having gone through those hearings and talked to the budget committee members, I can't imagine that they would want to cut buying a fire apparatus. I think that they would cut somewhere else. And I think you've, uh, in an oblique way, kind of summed up where the council's at. I don't think we want to go out and raise taxes or raise fees, which means we're going to have to find the money from within our own budget to pay for these facilities. But playing agenda musical chairs and saying we're, we're going to stop this because it was on the agenda today that that's a very haphazard way of doing it i think we'll need to cut something but the way to do that is to talk to the budget committee and find what is the best thing to cut not to put a stop on this because it happened to be up for consideration today as opposed to two weeks ago so i i, I agree with your with your with your general points in the direction that, that you're speaking and i think we're going to get there with the budget committee i just i, I can't imagine they're not going to fund this, and with that opinion, I, I don't think it's justifiable to delay it. But I, I agree with your with your main premise. I just don't want you. I mean, you you said that I wanted to cut it. I really just I, want to delay it until we figure out the overall problem. That that's correct. I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to uh, mischaracterize that. Please, Mr. Zerozinski. Um, I think uh, Chief Fish's comments regarding. Um, whether a building or an apparatus was more important. There was, um, it's basically a push and that that spoke volumes to me. I thought keeping options open was a good idea when, when asked by the people that are responsible for the fire protection. Um, not one ranked higher than the other, so um, I'll probably, I will support moving forward with buying the apparatus. I would, I would also support the purchase of this apparatus for for lots of reasons. Sometimes when it comes down to uh, buildings versus safety of people, I don't want us to be in the position of having one of our apparatus fail, which it apparently is at this point, or will, uh, and we're short, because that, that imperils then the public safety also. And I just don't want to, I know if, if, if we have a uh, an older firehouse that we need to work from for a while, so be it. But I think it's more equipped, more better. It's better to have our men and women equipped properly so they can they can answer and respond to uh, emergency calls. And that's really the first charge in my mind. So uh, if I had a vote, I would vote in favor. Further discussion. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Uh, if there's no further discussion, Karen. Would you call the roll, please? Daniel Bunn? Yes. Kevin Stein? Yes. Michael Sarasinski? Yes. Eli Matthews? Yes. Tim Jackal? Yes. Dick Gordon? No. Clay Berenson? Yes. There's six yes and one no. Thank you very much. That passes. At this point, uh, we do have some council business that we brought forward. Uh, we saved some, some uh, a place mark here for uh, public safety financing update. Uh, we had some uh, discussion at the study session for about 40 minutes, or I mean, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, about uh, an hour, 40 minutes almost. Uh, so we need to maybe have a little further discussion. That's under council business, so. But I'm really okay if you uh, would like to handle it, Your Honor. Okay. I don't know how that got put there, so. Well, it's just, a, it was a placeholder. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, I will yield back the uh, chair. Okay. Well. I, I think it is appropriate that we have a have a discussion. We we had a rather lengthy discussion uh, at a study session that was well attended, uh, and I think it's appropriate that we we have a little further discussion. And uh, 
where we'd like to start is is up to council a little bit here, but uh, Mr. Stein. Yeah, um, obviously there is no perfect decision because the perfect decision would have been everything's on budget the way we wanted it. Um, I think, and personally for me, um, talking with the with the builder, um, you know, the police station is seven percent over, and he talked about how, you know, maybe there's some things that weren't on the table, and now that we're in our situation, maybe they are on the table. So I don't I don't know if we can cut 1.6 million out of the out of what's there, but I think that's something that we should strive to do. And as far as the you know fire stations, it's so far <coughs> past budget. Um, and I, I think Mr. Bunn will probably talk more in depth about um, the the specifics. But you know I, I think we just need to do the option. I think four it was where you know we put a hold on it and we really. Uh, dig in and try and find some uh, ways to cut. Mr. Butt. Uh, procedurally, I think we need to consider the police and fire stations separately. That We may come to the same decision on both, but it'll be easier for me if we can uh, vote on those separately when it does come time to a vote. Uh, my mind's pretty made up on the fire stations. I think we need to uh, have a droid put some additional uh, VE thought into that with the architect, but uh, I think we do owe some thoughtful consideration to uh, if we should proceed with the uh, police station at this time, and I have a couple of questions on that uh, for whoever wants to field them from the audience. <laughs> uh -oh. Way to go, Chief. Just stand up for it. It's a, it's just a technical question, though. So. Uh, I've heard conflicting answers on if the masonry for the uh, parking garage facade has to be approved at the same time as the GMP. Uh, if it does, I think that, that makes our decision a little more difficult because that's a that's a big number to buy off. Do we have any wiggle room in approving the GMP and and taking a delay on the masonry? And if so, how long? Uh, yes, hi, uh, your your honor, uh, council, Greg McCown, uh, facilities and project manager. Um, we actually do, and, I, and thank you for bringing that up. I wanted to make a clarification that we can wait. I think uh, at a maximum of about sixty days. On the masonry, just, if we gave the yes. go ahead on the on the GMP, we could we could wait sixty days on the bid alternate for the masonry. Correct. The second item that I wanted to bring up, oh, go ahead. If I could no. um, is that we are paying general conditions on that project. So to have a site superintendent, electricity, the um, the facilities uh, for the construction crew, and, and that's fairly expensive. It's approximately six, uh, sixty-eight thousand dollars a month. A good point. I should have asked that. Um, that's all I have for now. Let others ask questions. I, I have a question, but I think Mr. Zerzinski is going to ask it in a more intelligent fashion. So <laughs> I, uh, I correct with that. Him. He told me, he says, no, just let me ask the question. So, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, thank you. Essentially, we have our square footage set today. Um, so I'll give you two questions. And one is, is it realistic? to come up with 7% from where we're at today? And if so, are any of those items dependent on, uh, is the BE for that depending on us stopping to evaluate, or can we move forward while we're evaluating those? Yeah, it's, it's not ideal to try to value engineer while you're moving in construction, um, but it certainly can be done. And I just wanted to point out that it is a guaranteed maximum price. There's no penalty for coming in any lower if we do come up with alternatives. Um, but you know, of the 1.6 that were over budget, that's pretty much all the contingency dollars that we're holding. So really, we have, I just wanted to point that out. So we're, our intent is to not spend that money, but um, it's impossible to predict how much we would be spending. And so the first part, with square footage set as it is right now, is it, it how realistic is coming down 7%? And maybe that's a... Maybe you can get help. I, I don't know. Well, it's it's. I think we're going to be able to come down some. Um, but again, I, I, that seven percent over is our contingency. So, if we come down some and and save our contingency, it's it's. Um, I think doable. Um, but it's hard to really answer that question right right now. So so with that said, if we get if we don't get another change order, then we're we're going to come in fine, correct? Well, if we have a change order because there's something wrong with the design or something that's found, uh, that's the purpose of the contractor contingency. So you're right, we would have to pull from that. 
Um, we have some VE options now, but they need to be looked at um, from a design aspect. Uh, we're talking about the expansion joint between the parking structure and the building itself. The droid, you know, offered that up as a last-minute VE item. It's it estimated about a $50,000 savings, but it will cost design. So how much of that will eat up the 50000 savings? So we talked a little bit in the study session about looking at those type of options is what is viable and, and, and what priority do we need to evaluate. But we certainly can do that while we're moving forward. Uh, but as far as the square footage, um, we didn't get a chance to talk about that. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have had a, uh, an opportunity to speak and, and the chief hasn't had a, t a chance to talk yet. And uh, so I think uh, if, if it's okay with you, I think the chief would, wants to talk about the, uh, the square footage. Thank you, Greg. Uh, it's Tim George, Police Chief. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I do want to talk about the square footage because that 5,000 figure has been talked about a bit. And, and if you remember right, uh, the McKinsey study did not include some circulation that involved that. So that was about 3,500 square feet of that for circulation. Of actually, about 1,500 square feet or 1,459 was the additional square footage. That 1,500 square feet is left undeveloped in this current project on the third floor. Now, mind you, um, our, our MEDG unit, the Medford Area Drug and Gang Enforcement Unit, is just about going to be at capacity when this building is completed. Uh, there, was, there was some push by council at the time this project started that we should have space for growth downstream. That's a 20-plus year building. And we're going to be at, almost at capacity in the MEDG unit when this building is completed. If we downstream and, and look to do that because the high-tech crime unit uh, didn't dissolve, but it went back to their parent agencies. We'd like to bring that back in and host that in our facility. And that would pretty much take up that 1,500 square feet downstream a couple years from now in, in, uh, in later budgets if we could approve that. So there really isn't a lot of extra square footage in that footprint. We have, uh, I think we have managed that and, and planned that. The project team and the design team have been at this for over a year. We continue to meet every Wednesday, and as, as recent as last week, I just want to make sure that we are stewards here of the total project. As recent as last week, we um, had a cost avoidance of almost $100,000 on two items additionally while we're in the construction phase. And one of those was brought forward by Adroit itself. So Adroit in the CMG process is assisting us and looking for ways to save money as the project continues. So there's a, there's a current effort doing that. And, and uh, Greg, the rest of the project team, along with the... Uh, the architects and the construction manager are active participants in looking for ways to do that to protect the contingency and look for ways again to try to get us to that point. But I think uh, it's been an effort and will continue to be an effort if we can. But there's not a whole lot of big ticket items left to, to VE out of this as far as to maintain the functionality which was the goal to start with. So I don't, I don't want to lose sight of that either. So I entertain any questions there as well. Yes, uh, this is, I guess, maybe more of a discussion item in the fact that this cost overrun is not due to an increase in price per square foot, but more in, in, in actual project need and in, in an increase in square footage. So I have a, I, I, I'm much, um, I'm trying to, is there, is there any compelling reason to stop this process when they're already on budget is what I'm getting at. I understand it's seven percent over from a total budget, but I'm just saying that the building itself per square foot is coming in correctly. Um, are we gonna? Is it? Are we gonna? Is it gonna be worthwhile to stop this whole process now? On the police, I, I agree on the discussion point, but I think framing up the question is the the reason we're talking about delay is potential value engineering, and I don't hear that there's. I think it's unlikely we're going to find something in value engineering that we need to stop for the next 30 days on. I mean, the steel's up. We're not taking any rooms out. We're not moving any walls. I mean, those decisions are made. So when we're talking about value engineering on this project, we're looking at finishes and things like that. We've got more latitude in the fire stations because we haven't started those. Is that correct with the project team that's in the room? Speak up if you disagree. That's correct. Yes, please, Mr. Matthews. A uh, question for Greg. You, you keep mentioning the contingency. Um, isn't it a common practice in, in, 
in the scope of these type of, of capital improvement projects to this size, that, that that contingency, the majority of the contingency is going to be used. We're not, we're not, we're not hoping that we're going to get a vast majority of that save, savings. Well, I know we would like to, but... I think that we are going to use contractor contingency but I, I don't think we're going to, unless the estimates that came in for SDCs and permits and fees that were provided uh, come in grossly under underestimated, I really don't see much need for the owner contingency, the 800 and so, some odd thousand that we were carrying. Um, but nonetheless, it would be um, irresponsible of us to not have any contingency whatsoever. Okay. Further questions? Mr. Gordon. Out of curiosity, uh, when I look at the uh, spreadsheet, Greg, that you provided to us, uh, there's a lot of fees on there, and I know it's something that uh, anybody that builds um, um, looks at. But can we waive our own fees on, on projects? In other words, I'm looking at this, and we're looking at uh, 525,000 in SDCs. We're looking at permits uh, and plan checks for 130,000, um, and then another 67,000 on the parking garage. Are we in a position to waive those? I realize it would affect other areas of the budget, and there are other department heads here that are going to, you know, get a little nervous. I'm just asking whether it's legal for us to do that. And one of the reasons I'm asking because I know there are cities around that that uh, talking to their mayors, at least they have, they have said that they don't charge, I don't know if it's SDCs or permits and plan checks, but I know that they don't charge for their own projects, which irks uh, certain people, sure. the private sector basically. No, that's a great question, and, and I, I asked that uh, early on, because it obviously would be a great savings to the project. Um, I, I don't know the legalities. Um, I, I do know that I was told no. Um, and so, <laughs> uh, but, I, but I did ask that question. Well, I guess I need to ask legal counsel. I don't think there's anything in our code or in state law that requires us to charge ourselves fees. I just think it's been a policy of this council, maybe an ordinance or resolution of this council, that you know growth will pay for growth. But not having had a chance to dig into it, I, I can't answer that for sure. Maybe Allison has some insight. Good evening, Allison Kahn, the finance director. Um, not from a legal standpoint, I'm going to address that, but from the standpoint, we charge all those funds an indirect cost allocation. And we say, you need to pay your fair share of having a payroll department, a legal department, and it's from those fees that they pay the general fund a substantial amount of money. So, to a certain extent, I feel like we're saying, okay, you have to help pay for these services, but we're not going to pay our share of a fee to build something. Um, if, if I were Corey, then I would say, well, then do I get to waive the indirect cost allocation? And, and I you would say no. And I would say no. That's true. So, um, <laughs> now, I understand that part yeah. of it. I'm just asking the legal part of it. That was the only thing. Mr. Rising, Mr. Rising, uh, Deputy City Manager for Development Services. I think all of the fees, including STC fees, are established by ordinance, and I don't think they can be waived without having a, a, an ordinance passed. So. I guess, Your Honor, uh, my thinking was, um, I mean, we're all trying to figure out some solutions here. Um, this um, would put a hardship on other departments, but so also putting on hold equipment purchases and capital uh, construction projects. Um, I'm just trying to figure out some way that, I mean, we're all going to, someone's going to have to pay this money. It's got to come from someplace at some time. So, you know, maybe spreading it around is going to stretch every department and maybe we're going to have some departments that are going to run short and we'll have to take a look at those as they occur. But, um, heck, I mean, I think we need to explore every opportunity we have and there's Five, six, or seven hundred thousand dollars over. 
$700,000. So I think it's worth exploring. And if Allison's real concerned about the, the cash flow or, or being able to pay for the indirects, then I guess we need a spreadsheet on it to see if uh, some of these funds uh, can uh, uh, basically uh, get through this period of time until um, we get back on our feet and get these projects done. If I may put a comment in, uh, other mayors may have a lot more power than I do. I don't think I would be waiving fees uh, at, at any point in the near future at least. Uh, but I still think we should seriously take a look at Allison's proposals before we just dismiss them out of hand because we can borrow from our own, our own funds. And I still think that's a legitimate way to do some things. It may not be the full amount, it could be a portion of the amount. Uh, we have to act just like everybody else does. I think if, uh, if, if we don't uh, allow uh, St. Vincent's uh, to have a waiver on SDC fees, we, and they're much closer to God than I am, uh, that, uh, <laughs> that perhaps uh, uh, we shouldn't uh, waive them for ourselves either. So I, I would really seriously still like to take a look at Allison's proposals because I think they bear, uh, have a, a, a great bearing on, on how our, what our decision process. We're looking for money here, there, and everywhere. We can still look for money internally, and and she's put a really pretty good roadmap out for us. So I still think we should look at that, Mr. Bunn. Uh, briefly, I, I I'm against that on general principle. I uh, speaking up for Mr. Corcoran. Uh, he thinks SDCs are too high, so do many in the development community, and I think it's pretty hypocritical of us to start waiving them. But. Uh, what you're basically arguing for is saying we need to take a little bit from every department. I think the way to do that is a supplemental budget. I think if you want to get the budget committee together and say we're going to uh, remove some appropriations from many departments and appropriate more money to the public safety fund, I think that's a very uh, valid solution and one that needs to be thoroughly considered is trying to solve this within our, with, uh, in our current resources. Uh, I like where you get at the end of the day. I just I don't, I can't follow you on the method on that one. Yes, Mr. Stein. Then Mr. Berenson, do we have both of you. Yeah, I like I like the idea, but it's kind of the same aspect of as what Allison proposed. We're just shorting instead of borrowing from ourselves. We're just completely shorting one fund. And it's kind of it gets the, it gets it just a different way. Mr. Berenson, uh, thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, I've yet to see a, a bead of sweat drip from Allison's forehead. And, and uh, I, I think when that day comes, I might be get a little concerned. But I mean, she does know the numbers in and out of this of this institution. But uh, I guess if I had my brothers, I'd rather I'd rather see the uh, police continue as, as planned, and then maybe start one of the one of the fire stations, and then maybe put two out to bid or and stagger them as uh, Councilman Bunn had suggested. Maybe. So it's not such a workload on all the subs at one time, and maybe if we stagger those the three fire stations, that we could get a better bid from the subs. It just take a little more time. Mr. Anthes, uh, I definitely want to see more potential options, and I want to be clear on, on my view on this. I think we need to step step back one more step. And I remember when we went through the process. I know for me it was a difficult decision and a big step. Um, to bomb $32 million without going to the vote of the people. I know it was for a lot of us. We did it. We, we believed it was the right thing. We still do. Um, but being where we are now, I'm very much not interested in, in borrowing or financing $5 million additional dollars. Uh, we came forth on this at $32 million. And, and Mayor, you made the comment, you know, that we need to act like everybody else I know is a different context, but we really do with this process. And when people budget and make plans, you keep within that scope, you keep within that uh, purview. And I think going over a little is one thing, but this is a giant percent. Um, so while Allison's recommendations are, are options, I think they're good options in a lot of ways, but it's something I don't even want to entertain. I want us to go back, and if we need to stop and do option four, we do that, but we need to come in for the price that we agreed on, which was $32 million for these four projects. I don't know how to get there. I want to see the options, um, 
and then that's where I stand. I think I think we can do it promptly if we need to put a hold on this and make it a priority to meet and figure this figure this out with the droid um, and ORW and staff. Um, but I think it's just unacceptable that we're even entertaining the idea of financing five million more dollars for these projects. Mr. Burns. My concern of uh, putting on the brakes is the financial detriment. Like, how much more is it going to cost to put on the brakes on everything? I mean, is it just going to cost more to stop everything? Or is it or is it financially sound to put the brakes on everything? I mean, that's, I guess it's kind of a question, but I don't know who, who, would, who would have the answer to that. But it just seems like it could potentially cost more by stopping everything in its tracks. And, 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 the, and the end of it in the long run just costs us more money. I don't know. That's an incorrect assumption. Well, again, we're looking at sixty-eight thousand dollars a month in general conditions for the police station project. Uh, so we're going to be looking at those type of costs um, if we if we postponed. Um, we are looking at a roughly a one-to-one -one ratio. In other words, if we postpone a week on the police station, we'll postpone a week on the completion. Um, however, uh, the weather uh, and, and other factors could extend that. I mean, if we start getting into uh, bad weather and we haven't. Uh, reached the point in the project that, that was going to dry in the building, I mean, it could extend that as well. Um, so typically one-to-one, -one, but it, it could extend further. And those general conditions then continue to rack up. Please, Mr. Chairman. Greg, I, I see that as you abandoning the process that you recommended we take. You told us to take this process because we'd stay together through the process. We'd come in under budget or on budget. And so now we're in a place where you're just saying, well, we're over budget, so take it. That's what I'm hearing you say. I'm, I'm not really sure how you would hear that. Um, well, I heard a lot more optimism out of Mr. Walker than I do out of you. He said he said we could, he could find 7% in the police station. I'm not saying that we can't find 7%. Uh, if you want me to give you an itemized list while I'm here, that's... I'm, I'm not saying right now, but I'm just saying you you seem to be advocating that we can't. Well, no, that's, I don't feel that I'm advocating that. And if I've come across that way, then I apologize for that. Um, we had two council uh, liaisons that were part of our design team. And I, I'd like to hear a little bit about what our council liaisons felt, because I think that um, the entire design team, it's not all on one person, um, spent a great deal of time uh, value engineering and reducing the building to a point where we weren't compromising the program for both police and fire. So we can go back and, and trim and cut more. There's, there's no doubt about that. But at what point are we going to compromise the program? Um, and I'm talking beyond just changing different carpet type or different um, you know, furniture uh, finishes. Uh, those are just my concerns. And, and I'm just being um, concerned, but I we definitely can lower the costs. Please, Mr. Mayor. So having that been said, and we discussed this in the study session, if that's the case, maybe that option one where we, we stop with three fire stations um, and reassess ASAP uh, the police station and see what we can do getting it cut where we can and staying within the budget. Would you make that a motion and I will second it? I move that we uh, stop currently the three, three fire stations and we, I don't want to say this, we are we going to need to stop the police Option one just says that we'll continue with the police and just just work assess. on the value engineering and try to work work, work forward with it and put a hold on the on the fire and still continuing with some value engineering on those. Is that what option one? Can, can I ask a question, of Mr. Walker? That may, may sure. Sure. Can you come down? Thank you for saying. Where to stop? Is that? We've asked this two or three different ways, and I know you don't have a crystal ball, so we're just, whatever your professional opinion is, but does it, are we going to get more out of VEing on the police station if we reject the GMP? 
you, you're, you're the one that's got to you know, shoulder the heavy load on this, looking for VD stuff. Does it help you to put the brakes on? Or the things that you reasonably think you're going to have a chance of getting the value on, uh, does that not hurt you? My, my personal professional opinion would be that stopping the process at this point, I don't know that it helps you. I think the things that are available for VE at this point can be VE'd while the work that's ongoing continues. Um, e examples that Greg brought up, the... Uh, the expansion joint between the two buildings. It isn't ordered yet. It doesn't need to be installed for many months. Um, let's look at, at changing that. And if we can save fifty thousand dollars, great. Change the spec. Change some details. Go forward. Um, another option is looking at the, uh, as an example, is looking at the uh, the metal panels that are on the mounted to the police station, but on the garage side of the police station where nobody but the police will see them. Uh, there's an option out there that needs to be vetted to save $91,000 by changing the panel type. Um, those are the kinds of things that I think can happen concurrent with moving forward. I don't know if, you're, if we're going backwards $68,000 a month while we wait, we're gobbling up potential savings by stopping. That, that's my opinion. No, I, I appreciate it. I mean, you, you, you have a better idea of it than any of us sitting up here. So. while well, we got them up here. I, I have a question for you. All right, I, I realize you don't have a crystal ball either, but uh, if we were to to do what uh, what uh, Daniel had said and, and and stagger out the fire stations, would you suspect that it would be easier to have those bids filled at a lower or those bids filled at a lower price in, if they were not so uh, I guess so put so much strain on the on the, the contractor market. My personal professional opinion is station two, I think there, are, there is money to be saved on station number two. I think that $86 a square foot is extreme, and regardless of what option is chosen, we need to relook at station number two. I think it suffered for some reason. Um, station number three and station number four, um, the fact that they came in so close to one another um, I tend to feel that that's just what the market will bear right now. That uh, you know, no, nobody is blaming subs for the pricing that, that where it came in. Um, that would be like blaming somebody for the New York the stock exchange rising and falling. It's just what what the market is currently. Um, I think at this point in time, that's where the market is on those buildings. I would certainly love to see station number two down. I'd like to see all of them less. Um, I don't know that reality is going to be that Station 3 and 4 will be much less than they are. It is certainly possible, um, but I certainly think Station number 2 is the low-hanging fruit. Thank you. Can we make another run at it, Mr. Matthews? Yeah, yeah, I'll move that we... Uh, <laughs> I interrupted you. I, I move the council to move forward with option number 1. Can we put the options up on the screen? Can we put the options up on the screen so we're not... I, I will second that, Your Honor, with the clarification that that's instructing staff to approve the GMP for the police station and re reject the GMP uh, with respect to fire stations 2, 3, and 4 and take no action on the facade alternate. Yes? Is that, is that how everybody remembers that? Option one, and, and that was to proceed with the police station. Is that are you interpreting that as accepting the GMP so that we can move forward with the work and that we would continue to um, bring the cost down? I think we're going to put that in our discussion of the motion. I certainly intend to speak to that. Yeah, that was my right, understanding. Where are you going? Okay. Let's wait for a moment. Let's so we can get the slide up and. No, you're fine. Don't no, bring a thumb drive. <laughs> Whichever, yeah, the yeah, option, the four options that were up.
Richard, you're fine. Thanks very much. Thank goodness for thumb drives, huh? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Matthews, is that what you re re recollect from the... Yes. Okay. okay so, yes, please. So at what point do we run over? Because proceeding still puts us on a track six six seven million I know at some at some point we're doing this building part we will start running over so when does that part start happening because I agree with mr. Matthews is that we shouldn't go a penny over because we budgeted if we proceed some point down the line we'll start cutting um, we'll start going over I think the intent of option one to proceed with the police was that there would be additional funding available if necessary to cover the shortfall, but we would continue, what I'm hearing uh, direction today is that we would continue to value engineer and bring it down as far as possible. I just don't know if we can bring it down $1.6 million. So. I think that that's an important factor, uh, regardless of the timeline. Um, but are, you're asking when? When? It, I, I guess what I'm getting. So, at some point in here, you know, everything because it's it's itemized, right? Like everything's budgeted. It should be this. It ends up being this. We, some point down the line, we're going to be up above it. When we bonded, did we aggregate police and fire, or are those segregated? It's aggregated. So we borrowed $32 million. It's police and fire together. So by approving the police station, we won't go over what we borrowed for. But now, we'll, we will. When The point you're referring to is when we start approving fire stations. But we're cutting, we're cutting the fire station out from under them. Yes. That, that's what's happening. So that's the solution is just say, well, since we don't have any... Like, if the fire stations were being built right now, like the police station is, we would just continue the fire stations even though, I mean, obviously it's theoretical. But the reason we can we keep continuing the police station is because it's already there. Like, we cannot say we're going to drastically cut it because it's already there. I think that's true in part, but the flip side of that is, you have to remember, we saved $500,000 going to the work package. So, it, it's not perfect. I, I agree. It's, this isn't the best way to be making the decision. If we could start over from square one, it's certainly not how I'd do it. But for where we are today, I think that's how you move forward. Okay. And that is something, Your Honor, I think that we forgot to mention. There's been a lot of flack given to the CMGC process, but uh, I think Adroit gets a big chunk of the credit for the early work package, and they did save us a, a decent amount of money there. And I think that should be reflected in our discussion. Further discussion? I'm in an agreement with the motion. I, I should at least throw some support here. I think uh, Mr. Bunn is right. We have a we have a bond package. Uh, I would. The message is obviously work as hard as you can to value engineer everything down as much as you can and still come up with a building that does what it needs to do for our, for our police department. I don't want to ride up in the elevator with somebody in an orange suit and chains anymore. And uh, I would prefer to, to have them across the street, quite frankly. So uh, we need to do this. And, and public safety is one of our is one of the biggest uh, things that we do as a, as a government. And one of the best things we can do sometimes. I mean, we do lots of other things well. But uh, public safety is one of our, I think, one of our main charges. And I don't want to give short shrift to, to any of, the, any of the, our public safety people. I think it's very important. But the reality is we are far enough along at this point with the police department and if we can value engineer some things and, and I'm not at this point I'm not going to hang my hat on the on the on the facade I mean you know we'll we'll do what we have to do there but that's not included obviously in that overage but I'm not going to hang my hat on the on the nine hundred thousand dollars either so uh, we'll do what we have to do to make it a viable building, and particularly, I'm I'm more concerned about the internals. Uh, I know the building itself will look nice if, if the if the parking garage looks like a parking garage. We're no worse off than the one next door, anyhow. So um, I hate to say it that way, but I'm you know the reality is let's 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 take a look at it, and we know the money's available. Uh, we'll work along, and hopefully we can cut that pair that down to 
maybe five hundred thousand dollars or, or something else and take a look at things so in the meantime then start to do some value engineering and particularly on station two which i agree with mr walker it's, it seems like it's just the outlier here somehow something's off there so um and do that so that's my my point i just have a quick question on it. sure uh, by accepting the gmp does it become static does it is it going to change i mean does it become fixed this GMP is at the guaranteed maximum price, or, or does that mean in like two months it's going to be, oh, the guaranteed maximum price is a bit more? Is no, more. that's not the case. Uh, we will have to come back before you with a modified contract anyway for that GMP because it does exceed the not to exceed amount that we have with the droid at the, as a, at the current moment. So we can, by, by your authorization, we can go ahead and move forward and um, make an amendment to the existing contract for the not to exceed dollar amount, but we'll have to come back with a modified contract uh, for the balance. But what I'd, I'd like to recommend is that we provide um, an update on a systematic update uh, to you and talk about where we're at with the VE. So, Mr. Stein, uh, we're not um, at the end of the project saying, yeah, well, we tried and, and here's, here's where we're at and, and we did make it. You know, I think that we need to provide you routine updates um, and, and how we've proceeded and, and I'm talking in regards to the police station as we as we move forward. Uh, I think we need to come back sooner than later uh, with with the fire stations and talk about what our options are. How about weekly updates? Every Thursday, just give us an update. We meet anyway. Is that possible? Uh, I, yeah. I mean, we, we'll do whatever it, whatever your direction is. Will you be looking for feedback from council, or just if we're looking for feedback from council? I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind doing a working lunch. We can schedule a study session every other Thursday. We're having lunch anyway, starting at 11.30, a 15 or 20 minute study session. It's a little bit of extra work, but we're already all here. So I think there's a way we, we should talk about it. There's a mechanism by which we can be involved in the DE process. Okay. Mr. Sarosinski, you were first. <laughs> well, I've already kind of given my, my, my thoughts on the police station, but one thing did come to mind and that is in regard to fire station four is there already been demo work done on fire station four we haven't demoed anything but we did build a temporary apparatus bay and the temporary living quarters and the fire station or the fire department has moved into that temporary living quarter so we'll have to move them back um, depending on the timeline for um, starting that process back up and putting it out to bid got brent fish fire chief there has been, the stuff's been removed from the inside of the fire station, the, the cabinetry and some of those things that we've taken and used into the, the portable logistic, or the logistics building there to store stuff and some of that. Some of that was found to have been rotten on the bottom, so it had to be removed anyway, but so to put go back into that building would take some extra effort. Do you foresee any issues with operations where you're at right now? Yeah, right now with the new temporary housing, if we add you know a few months to it, either way, we we have uh, you know, long term use for the, the the metal building that we've got the fire engine in. So that's you know going to be within us you know for us for many many years. The, the portable housing itself, we're going to uh, transfer to the parks department. So you know they're open to receiving it whenever we can make it available. Mr. Jekyll. Um, I'm in favor of option four for the reasons that I said in the study session and also for, even though I didn't vote for Mr. Gordon's motion earlier, um, option four uh, under his logic means if we pick option one, we're reducing, we're reducing our options um, down the road. And so that's why I'm going to vote no on option one. Thank you. Further discussion? We have a motion and a second. Uh, Karen, if you call the roll, please. Eli Matthews? Yes. Daniel Bunn? Yes. Clay Berenson? Yes. Dick Gordon? No. Tim Jacko? No. Evan Stein? No. Michael Zerosinski? Yes. There are four yes and three no. Okay. Does that require a second reading? It's a motion to bring a contract back. Okay, okay. At least a contract. Okay. So, is that 
satisfy what we need to do at this evening, uh, Mr. McCown, as far as direction and, and what council wishes are? Yeah. It does. Thank you. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Um, further reports from the city manager tonight? I have nothing to add, sir. Thank you okay. very much. Further remarks and propositions, uh, committee reports first. Anybody uh, attend a committee meeting uh, between lunch and now? <laughs> Attended a study session. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Mr. The Buck. Oregon, the Oregon Freight Advisory Committee is in town next week, so they'll be hosted by RV Act, and they're the state body that uh, has influence over freight transportation funding. So we'll be taking them on a tour of the great freight sites of the Rogue Valley. That's some community related business for you. Okay, very good. Yes, please. I had also earlier, um, not at any rate, but I attended the last meeting of the Cemetery Commission, and I can report that they are working on their facility management plan. Um, and that's sort of a big thing for them. It hasn't been looked at in quite some time. And they have a big problem with squirrels. Squirrels are a big problem right now that we gotta that we're working on. So remarks. My remark. Oh, please. Yes. Just a brief one, and I know you guys all received the invite uh, September twelfth, Saturday morning at nine thirty for Al Densmore uh, Bridge dedication uh, meeting at Bear Creek Park. Um, Going to be honoring him for his over forty years of public service and what he did and all his work on the Greenway. Um, so I recommend uh, come out and support them. Thank you very much. And I want, it's probably stating the obvious, but the groundbreaking for the uh, fire stations uh, has been postponed. With that, if there's no further business, we are adjourned.